Hi, and welcome to Unit 5 Intro to Chemical Reactions Part 3. This is the final part of this intro video. So in Part 2, we learned um, how to represent chemical reactions through balanced chemical equations, um, how to identify the reactants, which are what you start off with in the products, and then using particle diagrams like this to um, write out the balanced chemical equations using coefficients and chemical formulas. So now what I want us to take a look at in this um, part is let's learn what's happening during a chemical reaction. What takes place that allows us to go from these reactants to these products? All right, so what happens during chemical reaction? Let's look at a simple chemical reaction, um, but a very important one. So hydrogen, H2, can mix with oxygen, O2, to produce one of the most important chemicals on earth water h2o and of course i could write this out as a um, balanced chemical equation so let's take a look at to see what's happening during this process so once this resets here we go all right so these reactants are just sort of like floating around and if they have enough energy like if you increase the temperature so they get enough energy they start to move faster and then what happens is the reactants will break apart into their atoms and then the these atoms will then crash into other atoms forming the new product. All right, let's take a, cl a close up of that because that was a little fast. So again, we start off with these reactants, so H2 and O2. And then what happens is if they're given enough energy, these atoms will split apart. So now you have your two oxygen atoms are separated and then the four hydrogen atoms are separated. And it's just all sort of moving around really, 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 really fast, okay? and and then they'll start to crash into each other. And if they do it just right, they will produce product, right? And the product being, in this case, water, H2O. So they can produce two H2O molecules if they crash just right. So essentially, during a chemical reaction, bonds are broken and new bonds are formed. So now that we talked about all of that happening, bonds are broken, new bonds are formed, let's take a look, see, do we lose any atoms here, okay? And you, we can see that in this balanced chemical equation, did we lose any atoms? When they broke apart and reformed, did they, do we lose any? All right, so let's take a look. On the reactant side, we have one, two, three, four, four hydrogen atoms, and then one, two oxygen atoms. Check out how many we have on the product side. I'll give you a moment. No, we have the same amount, right? Four, one, two, three, four hydrogen atoms, and then one, two, oxygen atoms. So we didn't lose any atoms here. And that's because of something called the law of conservation of mass. It's also known as the law of conservation of matter and the law of conservation of energy. And they all mean essentially the same thing. All right. So we are, we're not going to lose any of the atoms um, or any of matter at all, because according to the law of conservation of mass, matter cannot be created or destroyed. You can change it, but you can't just make it disappear or create it out of thin air, out of nothing. Um, and the way that we can check law of conservation of mass, one way we can do it is by measuring the mass of the reactants and the mass of the products. They should be the same according to law of conservation of mass. If they're not the same, then you made a mistake in your experiment because the mass should be the same. The other way that we can do it is from the balanced chemical equation, which is sort of like what we did before. So here's our balanced chemical equation. We just sort of tallied up how many atoms that we have on the reactant and product side and made sure that those were the same. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be doing um, moving forward. Um, so we've done that with this particle diagram to determine if the chemical equation is balanced. And let's just define what that means. A chemical equation is balanced when there are the same number of atoms, so same number of hydrogen atoms, same number of oxygen atoms on both sides of the arrows, the same number on the reactant and the product side. Um, so we did that with the particle diagram. We could do the same thing with a, with a balanced chemical equation that has chemical formulas. And the way that we do that, like what we'll do is we'll list out the number, the types of atoms we have. We have hydrogens, we have oxygens on both sides. And let's start off by counting the hydrogens. So we should have four according to the particle diagram. And these two are the same exact reaction. Let's see how we got the four. We know that we have um, two H2. So each H2 has two two hydrogens. And since we have two of them, we have a total of four. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the coefficient and multiply it by the subscript. So the two times the two gives you the four. 
For oxygen over here, their coefficient in one is one, so it's one times two just gives you the two. Let's try that on this side as well. So on the product side, we have two H2O. So let's again start with the hydrogen. We have, we'll take the coefficient, two, multiply it by its subscript, two times two gives you four hydrogen. And that subscript is just for the hydrogen, so we'll need to repeat that now for oxygen. What's the subscript of oxygen? If there's no um, number written there, we know it's an invisible one. So it's gonna be two times one, which gives you two as well. And we can check from this tally that on the reactant side, we have four hydrogens. On the product side, we have four hydrogens. So they balance nice. On the product side, we have, uh, on the reactant side, we have two oxygens. And on the product side, we have two oxygens. So they balance as well, they match, all right? So in order for you to have a balanced chemical equation, you need to have the same number of atoms on both sides. All right, let's try the CFU. Um, I want you to see if this reaction is, is balanced. And if it's, if it's not, if it's balanced, explain by saying how many atoms on each side that you have. And if it's not balanced, explain by saying what isn't balanced and why. All right, pause the video now. When you press play again, the answer will be revealed. Okay, no, it is not balanced. And that's because you're missing an O on the product side. So let's take a look at our work here. So whether using the particle formula, uh, particle equation or the balanced chemical equation up the top, um, we notice that we have one Mg on the reactant side and we have one Mg on the product side. So the Mgs are good. Carbons, we have one carbon on the reactant and one carbon on the product side. So again, carbons are good. But for the oxygen, we have one, two, three oxygens on the reactant side and only one, two on the product side. So the oxygens are not good. And so that's what's, um, that's why it's not it's not a balanced equation. Now it's important that chemical equations must be balanced like this, right? And why is that? Um, so chemical um, balanced chemical equations are important because they're like our recipe, telling you how much ingredients or reactants you need, and how much product or food you can make. So if they're not balanced, then we have the wrong recipe, and then we're not able to um, produce the right amount of product or food. Later in this unit, we're gonna learn how to balance the chemical equation. So if I give you a chemical equation that, that isn't balanced, you'll learn how to do that. You'll also learn how to use that balanced chemical equation to determine which reactant you're gonna run out of first. That's called your limiting reactant and the maximum product you, amount of product you can make. All right, so let's just recap what we've done so far. In part one, we define chemical reactions. In part two, we represent we learn how to represent chemical reactions in the balanced equation and how to identify the reactants in the product. And finally, in part three, we learned um, what happens during a chemical reaction, but also learned the law of conservation of mass and how to identify if a reaction is balanced or not. So for your next steps, make sure you fill out the L of your KWL and take your diagnostic. That's it for this video. Have a quality day.